Hey there, my name's Rylan Russell, and today we're going to be talking about how to break down a piano shell and transform it into something that you can use in a modern worship keyboard-driven setting. Let's go. Alright, so it's no secret, you can see it everywhere, all over the place, of people taking old pianos and somehow reutilizing them in a modern way. Um, gosh, it's every band, I feel like every church has dabbled into this and I myself have now done this on two different pianos and I thought I would just dive into that, show you some of the things that I've done to kind of take ours to the next level of usability and what we really like about the way that we've kind of situated our keyboard that sits inside of an upright piano shell. All right, so the first thing that you have to consider is what size piano that you wanna have. For us, it was really important not to have a piano that is this tall because we wanted to have a shorter spinet piano that our pianist could see out over. So if you look at ours, um, it's not very tall. Our pianist is not very tall. She can actually see out over the top of it, but it's large enough that she has room for a few different things inside of that shell. So that's number one, determine what size piano you want. Then just keep a lookout on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or even ask people in your church if they have an old piano that they don't want anymore. For us, it wasn't about destroying this amazing piano and getting rid of something that was glorious. We found a piano that was not functionable anymore. Functionable, fun not functioning well anymore. And so we were really restoring it to life. The second thing you want to determine is do you need to take out the harp, which is all the strings and the heavy part that is in the back? Dismantling all of the wood pieces and all those things is really not that hard. Unscrew stuff till you kind of figure out how it's all put together. And um, But if you take out that harp, it makes it a lot lighter. So if you're gonna be moving a lot, um, you're gonna wanna either put it on casters or consider taking out that harp, which can be a lot more work. For us, we lucked out. The one that we got, actually, another church had already started the process and had taken the harp out, and so we didn't have to do that. But I would advise taking it out if you can because it adds a lot more space for the things that I'm gonna show you that we did to ours. So before you get started into this project, ask yourself, are you trying to solve a problem by doing this or are you just going to create more problems? For us, we were utilizing a giant grand piano some of the time and then also a Rhodes piano some of the time and also a keyboard other times. So the pianist that we have was complaining a lot about the stability of the keyboard stand, feeling like it was very rocky, um, not loving the way that her music was having to be displayed on an iPad so small in front of her. And so we looked at how can we solve those two problems? And I think we came up with a good solution with the way that we have our setup now. So here's the unique things that we chose to do in our setup. We're running main stage off of a Mac Mini. That Mac Mini is actually tucked inside of the piano shell on a shelf, and that Mac Mini is then feeding two different monitors. One monitor is used to look at main stage and also the planning center lineup. The other monitor is set right in the middle, and that is used for our pianist to view all of her music on music stand. Now you might be asking yourself, I thought Music Stand was only available for the iPad app. A lot of people don't realize that you can go into a browser on Planning Center and go into the Rehearse tab and it will bring up the Music Stand app essentially into a browser. It's really handy and it's worked really well and my favorite thing is that she can view two pages simultaneously. And then the other element that we've incorporated is the Bluetooth page turner. I'm sure you've heard of those. We found one that we liked a lot. I will link to that and other items that we use in the description of this video. We tried a few different ones and she, as somebody who has never used a Bluetooth turner, uh, really likes this one, the, the feel of it, the click of it, um, and just how it always connects with Bluetooth. The other problem that we wanted to solve was monitoring. Before, when she had so many different stations, she would have a long extension cable for her headphones strung over to our P16, and it was just kind of a mess. Now we're able to mount on a gooseneck the P16 directly there within arm's reach, right above the keyboard in a great spot, tuck that cable right behind, and she's good to go. We also needed to solve the problem of our pianist needing to look off real music sometimes rather than 
uploaded PDFs, so we made a plexiglass music stand that fits directly into the existing holes on the keyboard for its music stand. But that way they can still see through the plexiglass to see the computer when they need to. For the keyboard playing surface, uh, we actually chose just a Casio keyboard that I'll link to in the description. Tried a few different ones, and the most important thing is not the onboard sounds. But for us, we wanted to have a keyboard that if main stage went down, we still had at least a piano sound built in that we could go to in a backup situation. But the most important thing about that is the playability of it because it's just transmitting MIDI over USB into main stage. So I would definitely check out some cheaper uh, ones that are out there. We love the Casio line. We had a CDP 120 at first and we've actually upgraded to one that has a little bit more of the feel on the keys and she's been very happy. It's been very responsive and I can't complain at all. It's super slim. It fits right into the shell and uh, you know you don't have to get a Nord or something like that if you're going to be using main stage. And the other couple of benefits that I would say is you know for us we're a blended congregation and I truly believe that we were able to move from having a grand piano on stage to this model because some of our people actually think that we still have a piano on stage. I don't know how many people have actually commented and said things about Wow, you know, that piano sounds so nice. You know, I've never heard an upright sound like that. Or we actually had this one lady tell us that we needed to get the piano tuned. <laughs> and, which I thought was funny because it's, you know, MIDI. It's not having to be tuned. So whatever, maybe our guitars were out that Sunday or something. But um, that's been a great benefit. And the other thing that our pianist just really enjoys now playing on the surface because it feels much better than on a wobbly keyboard stand. It looks better, doesn't take up so much space to have keyboard world on half the stage now, and it's all contained in one unit. We can pop the back of the keyboard out, and all of our cables are hidden inside of there, the direct boxes, um, the power, and then you can even dress these things up as much as you want with LED tape and all those different things. For now, we're sitting pretty and we like it. So hopefully, those tips and tricks that we've used on our keyboard build can help you as you're considering yours. All right, so if you found this helpful, like and subscribe. Uh, I'm gonna be putting out more content like this. It's just things that I've learned or am learning as I do ministry, as I do videography, photography, and hopefully can help you out. Uh, like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.